Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Today with a bit of another sad message, it's 2 Kings chapter 17. And it's the end of the kingdom of Israel. I'm going to start at verse 5. Now the king of Assyria went throughout all the land and went up to Samaria and besieged it for three years. In the ninth year of Hoshea, the king of Assyria took Samaria and carried Israel away to Assyria and placed them in Hala and by the Habor, the river of Gozan, and in the cities of the Medes. For so it was that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God, who had brought them up out of the land of Egypt, from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and they had feared other gods. Go down to verse 18, and that just wraps up the whole thing. Therefore the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them from his sight. There was none left but the tribe of Judah alone. There comes a point, and this is a warning, there does come a point way down the list where God's patience and mercy runs out. There comes a time when grace is no more and you've crossed the line and it's too late. Guys, the real message I have here, like if, you, if you're feeling God tugging on your heart strings and you feel like Jesus is the right way, but you're sitting on the fence for whatever reason, maybe you just, you really like the sin that you're involved in. You like the relationships of the people you're involved in and they're not drawing you close to God, they're drawing you away from God. Maybe you really like, you know, the, the girl or the boy that you're with and they're not fans of God. And they're certainly not pulling you in a godly direction. They're probably pulling you in a very opposite direction. And I want to encourage you, if you're feeling a tugging from the Lord, and you're feeling like, hey, I probably need to commit my life to God, I need to obey Him, then you need to do that. Don't sit on the fence, don't wait. You need to do that. Also, for the non-Christians out there who are like, this is a bunch of bunk, this is ridiculous, I don't believe in any of it, there does eventually come a point where God's like, okay, I'm done. Just like with Pharaoh, Pharaoh hardened his heart many, many times, as, as was read in Exodus. I don't think I actually covered that on the channel, so I'll cover it briefly now. Just go back to Exodus. The, cha the chapters are fairly early on in the book of Exodus. It's like um, I'm trying to give you a bit of a format to go by. It's basically Exodus. Uh, da, 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 da. Good place to start would be chapter uh, 7. That's where the plagues start. And reading all the way through chapter 12 that gives and that's all the way through um the institution of the passover and the tenth and final plague where all the firstborn of egypt man and beast are killed there does come a point where you harden your heart long enough and eventually god gives you over to that lie it says that you, so many times pharaoh hardened his heart and eventually it starts saying the lord hardened pharaoh's heart there does come a point where you've hardened your heart long enough you're setting your ways long enough and it's too late. You've gone too far. And forgiveness is no longer an option. And generally when you get to that point, you have no desire for repentance whatsoever. Some of you aren't in a stage where you necessarily want to become a Christian. Some of you may be very anti-Christian right now. And who knows, maybe life circumstances will come around and change that and change your entire opinion on the afterlife and the spiritual world and God and all that stuff. But just a warning to my fellow Christians and to non-Christians alike, there is a point where grace and mercy are up. There does come a point where God says, okay, I'm done with you. And Israel was carried off into captivity, and Egypt was ruined. Lost tons of their crops, tons of their people, and tons of their military. They were completely crippled by God. So be careful. Don't presume upon God's grace and don't presume upon God's love. There, don't presume upon God's mercy. All of them are real. All of them are right there for you. But don't, please don't just assume that they're going to be there forever. There will come a point where God says enough is enough. That I, I almost don't even like to say that. I don't like the thought of people going to hell. I don't like the thought of people where God just is like, okay, no more, but... Another example from Jesus himself, when he stood before Herod, Herod the Great who had killed John the Baptist, Jesus had plenty of rebukes for the Pharisees and plenty of exhortations for the rest of Israel. And he had clear 
explanation of his parables to his apostles and disciples, the ones close to him. But to Herod the Great, he said not a word. Not a word. When God's not talking to you at all anymore, you're in a bad spot. You're in the worst possible spot. So if you feel him tugging on your heart today, if you feel a need for Jesus in your life, go ahead and ask him in. Tell him you believe in his Lord. He's your Lord and Savior. Tell him you need your sins forgiven. Because that chance, yes, there are definitely deathbed confessions like the thief on the cross who at the last moment accepted Jesus. And he, Jesus said, I surely say to you, today you'll be with me in paradise. That is real. That does happen. But if you're given the gospel now, if you're feeling God tugging on your heartstrings now, if you're feeling convinced about Jesus right now and a conviction of your sin right now, don't wait. Don't wait until it's too late because there is a point where it is too late. And I love you guys very much. That's why I want to share the truth with you. That's why I want to share the Word of God with you. I want to encourage you in the right direction. I want to bring you as close to God as I possibly can. And I'm hoping that you know souls will be saved and people will become Christians through this video series. I, I know they're the le my least viewed right now. But I'm hoping that one day God will use them and God will bring attention to them and that people will be get saved, become Christians, get born again, as a popular term in evangelical circles go. I'm hoping that will happen. For you, for you watching this video, for you, the Christians will repent and non-Christians will repent and come to Jesus as well. So thank you guys very much for watching this video. A bit on the heavy side, but nonetheless truth that it need to be addressed. I love you very much and God bless.